We've already spoken about one goaltender who was at one point on top of the hockey world, potentially leaving his team for next season, either via retirement or trade or something else like that in Tuka Rask. We made a video whether or not Tuka Rask had played his last game as a member of the Boston Bruins earlier a few weeks ago. But today's video comes for a different goaltender in a different set of stipulations. Today we're talking about Washington Capitals goalie Braden Holtby, because the Washington Capitals have just been eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs in five games from the New York Islanders. This one was actually kind of crazy because the Islanders had a 3 to nothing lead, the Capitals came back and won a game, Ovechkin had two goals, it was nice, and then game number five concluded last night. New York won 4 to nothing. Braden Holtby gave up Two goals on 15 shots, but the Washington Capitals couldn't get it done. There were two more empty netters after that. The Capitals lost for nothing. Barry Trotz's team is the one that goes on to the second round, and the Capitals are sent home. In fact, they're the only round-robin team that has been sent home. And I say that so far because technically there are two other series that could see that same thing happen, but I don't want to bite my tongue. Today we're talking about Braden Holtby because once that game finished up, the Capitals were eliminated and everything was set in stone. I saw Capitals fans everywhere on Twitter, on Reddit, all over social media posting, thank you Holtby, thank you Holtby, Holtby you deserved better, I appreciate you Holtby. Good luck with your career. And everybody was kind of acting like it was finally time. It's done. His time in Washington is no more. That's kind of the idea that I got from Capitals fans everywhere. So we're making this video here today to entertain that idea. Have we seen Braden Holtby's last game with the Washington Capitals? And if so, where does he end up next year? Because if you take a look at the historical records, and I say historical because it sounds cool, but really I just mean looking at what people have been saying for the past calendar year, Braden Holtby throughout all of 2019-20 was touted as a top potential UFA for the 2020 offseason. Him, Taylor Hall, Jacob Markstrom, all these guys were kind of thrown into this pool of players that many people were speculating could be highly touted UFAs. Holtby, though, is coming off of a pretty weird situation. His 6.1 AAV contract is ending this year, and he's 30 years old. The thing with Braden Holtby is, you're not going to be able to get this guy on a deal that's less than $6.1 million, because this could potentially be the last contract he ever signs in his NHL career. And to me personally, this isn't really about cap space, because the Capitals have a projected $10 million in cap space for next season, but the guys that they need to resign aren't really the most important kind of assets you can have on a team. It's Travis Boyd, who's an RFA, Kovalchuk, who we know he's probably not going to come back, Radko Gudas is over there, Brennan Dillon, Jonas Siegenhaller. There aren't really some A-tier need-to-resign guys on the Capitals, but... The thing with Washington is they have another goaltender who looks poised and ready to take over that number one spot in Ilya Samsonov, top goaltender prospect drafted out of the 2015 NHL entry draft. He's 23 years old, and he pretty much beat out Holtby in the crease in Washington with his performance this most previous season. He had a 913 save percentage as opposed to Braden Holtby's 897, and his 255 goals against average was much better than Holtby's 311. You could debate as to whether or not who actually played better in the net, but these are just what the numbers indicate. Furthermore, Holtby in the playoffs was not amazing, but at the same time, it's not like his team really gave him a chance to win anyway. A 906 save percentage in the postseason and a 248 goals against average. Certainly not ideal, but at the same time, it could have been worse. Braden Holtby, though, is a guy who literally is one of the kings of the former NHL years. For a really good portion in the mid-2010s, Holtby was one of these elite number one caliber goalies. In 2015, he started 72 games, and he won 41 of them. His 9-2-3 save percentage that year was really, really good, and he just kept on getting better as the years went on. A 9-2-5 in 2017, a Stanley Cup in 2018... His year in 2016 where he had a 9-2-2 save percentage actually won him the Vezina Trophy. So Holtby is a guy who still has what a lot of people would say is elite potential. 
because even though he did get an 897 this year, he did end off last year with a 911. So there certainly is still a debate that you can make that Holtby is not a quote unquote bad goalie. So now that the Washington Capitals actually have a guy who many would believe is going to be their next long-term starter in Ilya Samsonov, that puts Braden Holtby in a position where he will probably enter the UFA market looking for a big deal, a long deal too, because this is probably going to be the last contract he ever gets, and it's up for debate as to who's going to sign him. Now, I have a few different teams in the thumbnail just because, you know, it makes things a little bit more spicy to label teams as to who could potentially sign him. I saw Calgary Flames fans everywhere after they got eliminated last night talking about, hey, they should sign Holtby because Talbot and Riddich, I'm sorry, man, but those two guys, they weren't able to get it done. I know Cam Talbot had a really, really good stretch in the postseason for a small amount of time, but that was eventually eclipsed and overwritten with a terrible performance in game number six. As for Dave Riddich, well, he didn't really look all too great either. Yeah, the three goals and three goals for either of these goalies, with the fourth goal being given up as well, certainly doesn't look good for the Calgary Flames situation between the pipes. But the Flames have a ton of cap space for next season. So many demons they're going to have to re-sign. They're not going to re-sign all of them. And Cam Talbot is off the books too. So you could debate whether or not Calgary could be a really good suitor for a potential Braden Holtby UFA player. And if he's the guy who can come into Calgary and play the same way he played before this season in Washington, it could be a really good thing for a Flames team that's kind of struggled with giving up goals. And that may not be true for certain parts of the regular season, whatever, but game six, man, you guys gave up goals. The next team we're talking about is the Edmonton Oilers, and this one is one of the more interesting ones too, because when it comes to Edmonton, we've talked a little bit in the past about what made Edmonton kind of suffer and not really do all too well against the Chicago Blackhawks. We spoke about the leadership defensively from McDavid and Dreisaitl and how they need more of that. We talked about potential winger trades if they need more offense up front, but one thing can be said. If you have a tandem of Koskinen and Smith, is there a debate that you can make that tandem better? Probably yes. And Braden Holtby, just by reputation, could be seen as that kind of guy to fill that need. The Oilers have $10 million in cap space, and I get that they have to re-sign some really important UFAs like Ethan Bear, Matthew Benning, Andreas Athanasiu. Okay, they're probably not going to re-sign him. Really depends on what happens, but... They've got $10 million in cap space. Mike Smith is not going to be there. They've been comfortable with giving Koskinen a backup-like role in the past. So if you want to bring in a Braden Holtby, that could potentially be an answer for your defensive woes. Furthermore, we have a few other teams here. I just got some bottom feeders that we're discussing. Linus Allmark was really good for the Buffalo Sabres considering the circumstances, but could he have been better? I could probably say so. The Sabres are one of those teams that also have the cap space, and they're in a position where they are just so close to getting over that hump and finding themselves in the postseason. Who knows, if you have a really good goaltender, like a Braden Holtby, let's just say this is the Braden Holtby of last year, not this year, playing in Buffalo, he wins you one, two extra games that you wouldn't have won otherwise. You would have been in the playoffs and the return to play format this season instead of Montreal had that happened. So... There is an argument to be made that a Braden Holtby could fit with the Buffalo Sabres organization. And the last two teams we got here, it's Detroit and Ottawa. Detroit, just because they're the worst team in the league. They've got cap space. We've talked about this before. They could use another goaltender to play alongside of Jonathan Bernier. To me personally, I don't really see the long-term value in having a Holtby because he's 30 years old. The best players in the Red Wings are not going to be their best versions of themselves until Holtby is like 34, 35. So if you really want to hold off that long, then it really depends. As for the Ottawa Senators, they also do need a little bit more stability in net if I were to say so myself. Considering the circumstances, I guess they were okay, but Craig Anderson and Marcus Holberg in general were not all too great just based off of the numbers. If you want to remain competitive, you want to have yourselves a team that can actually go far with new additions like Quinton Byfield and Lucas Raymond onto your team next year, then maybe a number one goaltender is what pushes you in that direction going forward. So it really depends, but obviously these are just a few teams that I pulled out of thin air. 
a few teams by reputation that I thought could be appropriate for this kind of discussion. So talk to me in the comments below if you think Braden Holtby is going to re-sign with the Capitals. I personally do not think he will, which is why I made this video. If you don't think he's re-signing in Washington, where do you think he should go? Because there are many teams in the NHL and many teams that could use another good goalie. So let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video of the Nine. And bye.